If you're in love with Barbies and David Austin's and want to add Barbie core to your own gardens, this is the video for you. In today's video, I'm going to go over my favorite Barbie pink or hot pink David Austin roses. But if you would like to add more subtle shades of pink like we've seen in the movie, ooh, I have some amazing recommendations for you. So make sure you watch the video up until the end. Princess Anne. Let's start with the first one that I love and is also in my own garden. This shrub rose has been one of my most prolific bloomers in the past few years. It starts off as a deep pink rose and then gradually fades into a pure rich pink color. The blooms are large and have narrow but plenty of petals. It's quite a healthy variety and has not been infected with a lot of pests or diseases in my garden. I have had some issues with rose sawfly on the rose, but during that time, all my roses were infected with the rose sawfly. And other than that, it has not been infected with a lot of other diseases in my garden. The blooms are usually seen as these huge clusters and are so fragrant that when my neighbors usually pass my house, they can smell the roses. And so many of them have stopped over and asked me what that particular rose was because they love the fragrance so much. It has kind of like a tea fragrance and is hardy in zones five to 11. Gertrude Jekyll Rose. This is a new rose in my garden. I bought it this year as a bare root rose and have planted it on the back of my large fence with my other David Austin roses. Even though I only got a few blooms out of it this year, at least up until now, and they were a beautiful bright pink in color. The blooms are a stunning rosette shaped rose, and it is a repeat flowering variety that grows as a shrub or a climbing rose. You can buy it either way. I have bought it as a climbing rose, and it has a beautiful, strong old rose fragrance. It is supposed to be one of the earliest blooming varieties in spring. I couldn't tell that this year because I planted it as a bare root rose, so it took a while for it to grow out. But next spring, I will keep an eye on it and definitely give you updates on how it grows in my garden. If you buy the shrub rose, it grows as a large shrub about five feet to three and a half feet in size. But if you buy it as a climbing rose, it grows up to 10 feet in size and it is hardy in zones four to 11. The next rose is called James L. Austin. This rose has flowers with large multi-petaled rosettes that are deep pink in color. Each rosette has a button eye in the center. It is a medium shrub about four feet to three feet in size and is from a repeat flowering variety. It is hardy in zones five to 11. The next rose is Gabriel Oak. This is another gorgeous variety from David Austin and has been a favorite amongst a lot of people. It has medium-sized, multi-petaled, rosette-shaped blooms. They are a beautiful shade of deep pink, and the outer edges of the flower pales as the rose blooms. It has a strong and amazing fruity fragrance. This is a vigorously growing shrub rose that grows about four feet to four feet in size. It is repeat flowering and is hardy in zones four to 11. Sophie's Rose. This rose has almost crimson pink rosette shaped flowers. The flowers are broad, flat and large with small petals in the center that increase as you go towards the outer edge of the rose. Now, this might be a great option of a rose for someone who wants a rose more on the red shade of the spectrum, but still wants kind of like a pink rose in the garden because it has a shade that kind of hugs both those color spectrums, deep dark pink and a lighter red in color. This has an upright, bushy, medium-sized shrub that is about four feet by three feet in size. It has a light tea fragrance and it is hardy in zones five to 11. Princess Alexandra of Kent is a shrub rose that has bright pink roses that are full petaled and deeply cupped. The stems are held upright. And if you're one of those people who don't like those drooping stems with flowers, because some of these flowers get super heavy 
for the roast, this might be a great option for you because the stems stay upright even with the fully bloomed roses. It has a strong tea fragrance with hints of lemon and black currants. It is a repeat flowering rose with a large shrub about five feet to four feet in size and it is hardy in zones four to 11. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I am going to recommend a few roses that are for people who want pink roses, who love the barbecue trend, but are looking for a little lighter shade in pink like we've also seen in the movies. Next rose is James Galway. I have to talk about this rose because I am absolutely in love with how they look. This year they have just produced like crazy in my garden and I am in love with this rose. This is a climbing rose. I have five of these with seven more roses on the back fence of my garden. That resulted in me having this beautiful fence just filled with flowers earlier this summer. It was such a delight to see all these flowers in bloom. Oh my gosh, it was just gorgeous. This is a vigorous and wonderful climber that grows up to 12 feet in height. What I like most about this rose is that the flowers are quite unique. They start off with a densely packed flower with a mid pink colored center that gradually becomes lighter towards the edges. These roses have such a romantic look to them with each rose creating a beautiful dome shape. It's supposed to have a light to medium old rose fragrance. I would say it's more towards the light side, but it is still a beautiful fragrance and it is hardy in zones four to 11. Mary Rose is another rose in my garden that is mid pink in color. The flowers are loosely petaled medium sized blooms. This rose has a delicious medium to strong old rose fragrance with hints of honey and almond blossom. This is one of the roses in my garden that actually reminds me of the old roses that my grandma used to grow and my mom used to grow in their garden years ago. And my mom especially had this one climbing rose in the garden, which we used to create jam all the time. And the jam tasted so good. It was a very thorny climber that my mom had, but the smell was just utterly divine. You could just stand like 10 feet away from it and still be able to smell the rose. It was really strong, beautiful smell. And this Mary Rose kind of reminds me of that old rose smell. Now you can buy this as a shrub rose or even as a tree rose. And I have actually chosen the tree rose in my garden. And as you can see, it looks really beautiful to create a very modern look to the garden. Even if you're creating more traditional design, you can plant this and still have a lot of roses and flowers underneath it to create a beautiful staggered and layered look in your garden. I own about four of these roses and I absolutely adore how they look when they are in full bloom. If you end up getting the shrub, it is a medium shrub about four feet to four feet in size. And I would say this is a little more prone to powdery mildew than all my other David Austins. And I especially was having a lot of problems with it in my first and second half of the year with powdery mildew. But once I did this winter care routine on it two years ago, I have not had any issues with it for powdery mildew and it has worked really well. I will add a caveat that I think I might have more of an issue of the powdery mildew because I live very close to the ocean and I have kind of like a wind tunneling effect and a microclimate for this rose where it gets a lot of the ocean winds. So it might be because of that or it, maybe it needs more sun than it's getting in that area. But as of last year and this year, I have had minimal issues with the powdery mildew and it is just blooming like crazy. This rose is hardy in zones five to 11. And I had mentioned that I had planted a bare root rose for the Gertrude Jekyll rose in my garden. And if you wanna know how to plant these bare root roses in your garden, check out this video right here.